are you this morning? Everybody good? Yeah. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Good morning. Our opening hymn is 553, And Are We Yet Alive? Very familiar melody with some different words. 553, please stand. Affirmation of faith is on page 881, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Now comes the time in our worship service where we share our joys and our concerns. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for each day that you bring us into your house. And Lord, we know too well that you know that we would like the ways of discipleship to be easy to have paths laid out with a neat timeline with the future clearly visible at all times. But part of our journey is obscured by our own greed and our own fear. Lord, you do not block, block the way to hope and peace. Our fear provides those barriers, and far too often those barriers take the form of alienation and prejudice. Write your words on our heart, Lord. Write your words on our heart. Plant your transforming love in our spirit. Give us courage. And as we gather today to bring before us our concerns, our joys, our sorrows, give us hearts of peace and confidence in your sustaining presence. Help us to set our feet on the pathway toward the cross and beyond. Now let us pray together as Jesus called us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our ushers come forward for our morning offering.
you stand? Gracious God, you sent Jesus into our lives to change us in bold and and amazing ways. Lord, we place this offering before you. Help us to remember to completely love you and to be stirred into fruit-bearing action and results of faithful discipleship and faithful stewardship. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. climbed the hill to the garden still his steps were heavy and slow love and a prayer took him there to the place only he could go
it again. You did. <clears throat> this morning readings are from the uh, prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, the priest Ezekiel, chapter 19, and a verse from Hosea, chapter 20. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor to, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. From the priest Ezekiel. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. From the prophet Hosea, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. I have asked um, Ed to play a song, so you listen closely, uh, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Um, And I won't torture you through the whole song because it's four minutes long, but listen closely to the words. Let us pray together. Gracious and holy God, help us to fix our eyes upon Jesus. Help us to fix our eyes upon you, the God who always remembers us, who calls us back from our living hells that we make for ourselves, calls us back from all the death and destruction and greed and selfishness and self-centeredness that we choose to take those paths, but you call us back. We choose those waves of suffering, but you call us back and make us whole. And we thank you for that grace. In Christ's name, amen. Last week we talked about the covenant, God's covenant with David, and this week we're going to be talking about the covenant with Jeremiah, which would be with Ezekiel and all the prophets especially. But we know that it comes from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. And it's been centuries since the covenant with David, and things have changed. The people have once again fallen into sin. They have, fought, they have forgotten about God, and they have been, then they will be taken into exile. And Jeremiah is called by God to be the prophet to speak the truth to them. And if you recall, Jeremiah was a young boy when he was called to be a prophet. And God says, I will appoint you over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and overthrow, and yet to build and to plant. Sometimes that's our role as prophets, is to both tear down and pluck up the things that are not godly. To destroy and overthrow the things that are not worthy of God. And yet, our role also is to build up and to plant. God is calling this prophet, this young boy, into something that is probably the most difficult thing he'll ever do in his life. And it was long term, very long term. So we see that God is speaking to Jeremiah in all of these oracles. And you ask, well, what's an oracle? And how do we know God's words? How do we know it's God? Well, 
the, that's how the prophets spoke for God. They spoke through an, or an oracle. They received the divine message and they, they said the divine message to the people. So an oracle is the divine communication or revelation from God. The oracle in Hebrew is Massa, which means a load or a burden or a heavy message. So Jeremiah is called to proclaim this heavy message to the people. And he's trying to convict them of their sins and that they're not living in harmony with God. And they are called over and over and over again. And our sinful hearts sometimes need to be convicted, don't they? We think of conviction in today's world as an ugly word, but God still uses conviction to bring us close. God's grace, uh, God, grace is God's forgiveness and power to live as children of God once again. Conviction keeps us from falling away. So Jeremiah has the hard work of convicting the people and he's trying to change them. Their eyes are closed, their ears are closed, and their, their heart is like stone. And God says, if you can run through the town, the streets of Jerusalem, and find one person, just one, that hasn't turned away from me, then, I'll turn, then I won't do what I'm about to do. Jeremiah couldn't find one person. So her sin was, Jeremiah's sin was oppression, violence, destruction, worshiping false gods, which God says are no gods. So when you think about those things, that's still our history today, isn't it? Oppression, violence, destruction, greed, self-centeredness, worshiping other gods. But God wants, wants to, to convict the people first and bring them back, but they don't listen. They rebel against God. And there, it also says in Jeremiah that they just give lip service to God. Have we ever just given lip service to God? We do that sometimes, don't we? They were crying, peace, peace, where there was no peace. And God only asked for them to return, to turn back, to come back to the people that he had called them to be. Because God, God because the people refuses, that God refuses to protect them. God refuses to protect the people from the outside forces that were around them. So when that happens, the Babylonians come and they, they take the people away to Babylon. They destroy Jerusalem. They burn the city and take the people away. And God is grieved by what has happened. When I read Jeremiah, it says, God grieves for God's people. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me and my heart is sick. Oh, that my heart were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears so that I may re re weep day and night for the slain poor people. God doesn't just discipline us. God weeps for us. God cares deeply for us. God feels the pain that we bring to God. One of the things I love most about the movie uh, of Jesus being crucified um, is when he's crucified, there's a teardrop that comes down. That is my most favorite part of that movie is that God weeps when Jesus is crucified. Jeremiah has prophesied for 23 years to try to bring the people back before they, are, before they go into exile. 23 years the prophet has spoken the truth to them. And then the exile happens. The people are far away from home. They're they're disciplined by exile, and they have time out in Babylon. 
And when we're putting time out, it's, it's, not, it's not because our parents don't like us, right? <laughs> it's because they love us enough to try to teach us to go the right way. But they have kind of made their lives a living hell. And when you look at hell in the book of, in the, in the Bible, hell, the, another name for hell is Gehana. And Gehana, as Susan Robb says, is the, the, is the word that Jesus uses to describe utter separation from God, a place created by humans, not by God. The people had gotten themselves into this place of separation from God, a living hell. We too get ourselves in those places, don't we? Have you ever felt like you were in a living hell? I've done some crazy things and put myself in hell before. I don't know about you. But remember that God didn't create hell. Humans did. And Jesus gives us a warning about Gehana so we do not harm our life and our health and our relationships with family and friends and bring harm to the lives of others. The people were taken into exile. They were there for 70 years. 70 years. That's a lifetime, isn't it? Some of them didn't make it out. Some of them were there their whole lives. And then God remembers the people and God changes, the the book changes and it turns and Jeremiah starts proclaiming oracles of hope. God gave them a new covenant. God's commitment is is to us, God's commitment to us is deeply personal and intimate, like a covenant of marriage. God takes on a breathtaking approach to how God will implement the covenant. The covenant will not be written on stones of tablet that can be broken and shattered. This covenant will be written on the hearts of the people. God writes His Word on our hearts, folks. What a blessing. (laughs) It's there. It's there. It's always there with us. All we have to do is claim it. God says, I will put my law within them. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm crying. (laughs) Because this is so touching, I guess. (laughs) I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. For they shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Forgiveness, grace, mercy, love, deeper than we can ever imagine. God is in the habit of making new covenants with us when we fall on our faces. But our human condition, yours and mine, is to wander away from God, to, to forget and to rebel against God, to put ourselves in a living hell. And I guess that's why I chose the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I want you to listen to it sometime today. Listen to that hymn. You can find it on YouTube. You probably have it in your hymnal. But look at the words and listen to it. And in this Lenten season, we are called to remember who we are and what God has done for us. And that God literally writes His Word on our hearts. 
Warren changed his hymn this week, <laughs> and, he, and the hymn that he chose was, Are We Yet Alive? To remind us, are we yet alive? In this season of Lent, are we yet alive? Are we God's people? And we are called to remember the debt that Jesus gave. He gave his life. He gave his life for us. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. And I've said it. <laughs> Our closing hymn is 472, Near to the Heart of God. 472, please stand. this benediction, God has shared God's best with us. Now go and share the blessings, share the grace, and share the love with the world around us. Amen. Amen.